Hello all, today we'll be discussing about hyperparameter optimization and the algorithm that I'm going to use is something called as XGBoost. Hyperparameter optimization is a very important task in any machine learning use case. The reason it is because it will help you to select the right parameters that are basically used for the machine learning algorithms. So to begin with guys, make sure you watch this particular video till the end because this particular video, by watching this particular video, it will give you a knowledge, it will give you an intuition like how you can apply the hyperparameter optimization for other machine learning algorithms also. So to begin with, I'm going to take a very simple data set which is called as churnmodeling.csv. This particular data set is basically available in the Kaggle website. And uh, in this particular uh, data set, what we are trying to do is that there are some customer, bank customer information, and then we have to basically predict based on this particular features that we have basically like credit score, geography, gender, age, tenure, balance, number of product, whether the person has a credit card or not, whether that particular person will exit the bank in the future or not. Okay, and suppose if he's trying to exit the bank in the future, which will be predicted by the model, what the bank can do is that give him some better offers so that he stays in that particular bank, right? So in this particular uh, algorithm, first of all, what we are going to do is that we will be importing pandas and then don't worry about this particular code guys i'll be uploading this in the github and the url will be shared in the description box of this particular video then i'll be reading the csv file with the help of pandas and this is how my head looks like okay and this particular record has 10000 rows uh, i mean this particular csv file has 10000 records so it will be a wonderful problem because i'll also be doing some kind of feature engineering also now after getting this particular data set, what I'll do is that I will just try to find out a correlation and uh, I've discussed about correlation a lot. You can go into my statistics playlist and understand uh, what is actually correlation. Correlation basically checks uh, whether each and every dependent features, uh, sorry, whether each and every independent feature is actually, um, you know, useful for the dependent features or not, okay? So here you will be getting some positive and negative values and this is a simple code that you can basically write like df.cora. Uh, this is basically for the correlation. Then you can basically plot the diagrams as it is given over here by using this SNS, which is basically the heat map. Now, after you construct the heat map, this will basically have a lot of values. Your correlation value will be ranging between somewhere. You can see different kind of ranges and the maximum range that will be, will be one. But based on some other data set, your correlation value range is basically between minus one to plus one. So here it is. Now you can see over here the output column is exited. Now you can see over here row number is not required because it is a negative value customer ID, not important credit score, but age is important, balance is important, estimated salary is important, and uh, some of the uh, values is basically negative. So what we are going to do is that, I will just divide this particular feature into my dependent and independent features as from this particular data set, we know that our dependent feature is basically the exited columns, whereas all the other features are my independent columns, right? Now I'll just go down. I'll just use the columns by using iLock. I'll take all my independent features in my X value, all my dependent features in my Y value, which is just one, okay? Then you notice from this particular data set, I have features like geography and gender, which is basically a category features, you know, like France and Spain and other, other, other uh, geographic uh, locations. Whereas in gender, you have male and female. So obviously as a part of feature engineering, I have to convert this particular category feature into dummy variables, okay? So for that, I'll be using pandas, and here it is, pd.get underscore dummies. First of all, I'm just taking geography, and I'm doing this drop underscore first is equal to true, because if I have three, uh, three different states or three different geographical location, one geographical location can be dropped because the first value of zero, zero. Suppose if both the column is having zero, zero, that basically indicates my third uh, geographical location. So make sure you keep this value always as true. Okay, drop underscore first is equal to true. And if in an interview they ask you why it is exactly done, you can just say that um, to prevent from the dummy variable trap. Okay, but the exact information is that this two particular column will be able to represent the third. Uh, after that, uh, I'll again do it for gender. Okay, get underscore dummies. Now you can again keep as drop underscore first is equal to true. So I just have one column where the male basically zero basically says that that is female when the one value basically says that it is me. Then what I'm going to do is that, since I have converted these two features into category features, oh, sorry, geography and gender into category features, 
or dummy variables, what I can do, I can drop these columns because I don't require it. So for that, what I'm doing is that I'll just over here, I'll just say x dot drop geography and gender axis is equal to one. Okay, and this is my head again. You can see that I don't have geography and gender. Uh, one more thing to note is that I've taken my features from third column. You can see over here from third column. The reason I've taken from third column, basically I have number and customer ID and surname. These are not important features as I know, and the correlation also gave me some different values which are not interrelated. So I will not be using these three features. Anyhow, customer IDs will be like a unique ID and it will be increasing or decreasing. Whereas row number, it is just like a index number and surname, not important as usual. So what I'm going to do, I'm dropping these three things. Uh, so not, not dropping, I'm taking the features from three to 13, okay? Then let us just go ahead. Uh, here it is, I've dropped my geography and gender. So this is my data set now I have. After this, what I'm doing is that I'm concatenating my geography value, which is my dummy variables and then my gender values. Here you can go ahead and see, see geography is my dummy variable. Okay, this and my gender, right? This, I have to concatenate with my independent feature, which is this, okay? So for that, I'm basically using uh, pd.concat x comma geography comma gender with axis is equal to one. Axis is equal to one basically means it will be appended column wise. And when you go and see the head part, you can see that it is being added over here. So you have Germany, Spain and male. Okay, perfect. Very simple till here. Very perfect. Very, very, very easy steps till here. Every, I think most of them are familiar with this. Now comes the most important part. I'm going to use XGBoost algorithm. Uh, if you don't know the theoretical explanation of XGBoost, I've already uploaded a video. You can go into my playlist and have a look. Um, Apart from that, what you can do is that you can just apply XGBoost. While applying XGBoost, the first thing is that, let's, let us just directly go to the XGBoost uh, classifier, okay? So in order to apply XGBoost, uh, make sure you import XGBoost first of all, okay? If you are not able to install this, if you are not able to install it, just write pip install XGBoost, okay? Just open your command prompt, like your anaconda prompt. <coughs> And once this will get open, just write pip install xgboost. Okay, and just press enter. I have already installed, so I'm not going to execute this particular command. Now, in xgboost, there is a method which is called as xgb classifier. Now, in this particular xgb classifier, there are a lot of parameters. See this: there are max depth, learning rate, estimators. Now, how many decision trees I want to use? And they are all different, different uh, values like uh, logistic booster, GB tree, this gradient boost tree, how many jobs, N underscore jobs. So it is very difficult for the, us to directly say that what value should I select, right? So for this purpose, what we do is that we use randomized search. Randomized search internally works in various parameters and tries to find out XG boost will work better for what kind of parameters it will give, it will be given if it is given to this particular XGB classifier. So to begin with, what I do is that I'll select some parameters. Okay. Now in this parameters, I'll be selecting only those parameters that are present inside XGB classifier. Now in this particular case, you'll see that there is max depth, there is learning rate, there is n underscore estimator, everything is there. So based on the same parameter, I'll go and assume over here. So learning rate, I'll not just give one value. I'll give a list of values. What my randomized search algorithm will do is that it will go and do permutation and combination for each and every value and it will try to find out for which particular value it is giving the highest accuracy. Okay. Similarly, in the case of max depth, we will be giving different, different values. Don't lower your value more than this for the learning rate. Otherwise, it may be a overfitting condition. Okay. Now, and, and the training time will also take more. Okay. Then similarly, you can select mean child weight where you can provide different, different values like one, three, five, seven and gamma values because child weight is basically required in XGBoost. Um, gamma gamma value, what are will be the different gamma values? Column sample by tree, how many different different values? You can just uh, write different different values like 0 0.8, 0 0.9, but make it sure that these all values be less than one, okay? Now, after this parameters is selected, what I will do is that I will try to import randomized search CV. Now here you can see that I have imported randomized search CV. And inside randomized search CV, what I'm going to do, I'll go down over here. Now you see, I'm calling randomized search CV. The first parameter is basically my classifier. Now here my XGBoost is just taking the default classifier. Okay, I'll just provide this classifier over here. My 
there is a parameter which is called as params underscore distribution. Inside this only, I will be providing my this params that I have basically initialized. Okay. So what XGB classifier will do? Randomized search will make use of all this value, apply it on the XGB classifier, and then see that which 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 XGB classifier with respect to different different learning rates and other parameters is giving you uh, good accuracy. And that values will only be selected. Okay. Now here I'll go away. So the first parameter is param underscore distribution is equal to params. Then how many iterations you want to do? What is the scoring attribute? We basically use ROC underscore OUC. N underscore jobs is equal to minus one. This makes sure that uh, this value minus one will make sure that it uses all the cores that is present inside your machine, uh, your desktop, your, your laptop. Okay. And here I'm taking a cross validation of five, five different cross validation. And verbose is basically to give, an, to give the message when I do the fit, like how many times it is taking, what is the time, what is the status of the jobs and everything, all the information. So this is my randomized search. Okay. And all I have to do after that is that I have to just write fit. But just before writing fit, what I'm doing is that I've created a timer method. Now this particular timer will note how much time it is taking to execute this whole randomized search CB taking the XGB classifier. Okay. But surprisingly, you'll be seeing that as soon as I started and coding this, you know, it hardly took me 5.7 seconds. Okay. Or it was just like 6.18 seconds. Within 6.18 seconds, it was able to, you know, cross validate five different experiments. And finally, my randomized search worked. Okay. It worked properly and all the execution was done. Okay. After the execution was done, there are basically two parameters that you should focus on. One is you should just say randomize random underscore search dot best underscore estimator. Now, as soon as you select best underscore estimator underscore, this will give you all the parameters that are selected by the randomized search for that XGB classifier. And it is telling us that you basically use this best estimator, all the values. Now you can see over here, if I go on the top, right? Now here you can see that what is the learning rate 0 0.05, 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0 0.20. From this, which learning rate has been selected, you can go down and you can find out that learning rate of 0.1 was selected. Similarly, you had different, different gamma values, right? 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Now from this, which gamma value has been selected? You can see away gamma was selected as 0 0.2. Similarly, different, different parameters like max, their minimum child weight, all has been selected. Over here, you can see that object is also binary logistic and all the different values were selected. But if you want to know exactly from all these parameters that you are actually given, what parameters were selected and what was the value of that, you can just write, there is another, uh, one is best underscore estimator underscore, one more is something called as best underscore params underscore. Now here, when you write it, you will be getting all your parameters. Okay. Now what you can do is that you can just copy these parameters, you know, you can just copy this parameter and paste it inside XGB classifier. Either that one way you can do, or you can just copy this best underscore estimator and copy it and paste it over here when you're creating your classifier over here. Now I've done the same thing. I've done the same thing. What I've done is that I've just copied this whole thing and I've pasted over here and I've actually made my classifier. As soon as I did this, I, uh, I made my classifier, executed it perfectly. Then what I've done is that I've implemented cross val score and I have basically used the same classifier and given my X and Y value with my cross validation as 10 experiments. And by that score, I've found out that I've got 10 different accuracy, which is like 87%, 86%, 87%, 86, 85, and 87. So when I do score dot mean, I'll basically be getting 86% as my accuracy of my model. And that is how a hyperparameter optimization is done for XGBoost. Always remember guys, the reason I've used randomized search because it is much more faster than grid search CV. Okay. And I've used it for XGBoost to show you an example because similarly you can apply it for logistic regression for KNN, for random forest, for decision tree, for anything. Okay. You just have to fix your params. What are the different that are basically used in this particular algorithm that you have to just suggest it and you can basically use it. That's it. And that is how you actually do it guys. Uh, I hope you like this particular video. Um, make sure you subscribe the channel. If you are not subscribed, share with all your friends who have required this kind of help. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. God bless you all.